Hi, it's The Wire. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Thursday, March the 19th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, if you're going to bet on boxing, I believe it is very important to bet on the fight that's taking place now. Not a fight that happened in the past. Right? Make no mistake. I thought Triple G beat Canelo the first two times they fought. I watched all 24 rounds. I have yet to see Canelo beat Triple G. But the bet I'm recommending in this fight, the third fight between these two, is that you consider, at least I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right? I'm taking Canelo to win the fight. I'll hedge the play because of the punching power with Triple G by KO. Quite frankly, and I know this is not how most people see it, one man's opinion, Quite frankly, I consider the Billy Joe Saunders fight that Canelo has coming up to be a much tougher fight, in part because of the movement, the fact that Saunders is a southpaw, the fact that Saunders has a jab, the fact that Saunders has lateral movement, can fight inside and outside, I believe has a hand speed advantage on Canelo. I consider that Billy Joe Saunders fight to be much tougher for Canelo than this third fight with Triple G. Now let's let's talk about the two fights because they're different. First fight, Golovkin's the aggressor. He's the man coming in controlling the pocket. He lands a lot of hard body shots. Canelo is backing up. Canelo's trying to fight the fight using boxing skills on his back foot. Right? Canelo's episodic. Canelo is the one who's expending a lot of energy in the middle of the fight. Canelo looks tired. He looks winded. He looks like a guy being hunted down. He's the hunted in that fight. Canelo does make a comeback, but I thought it was clear that Golovkin, who at that point was an unbeaten middleweight champion, had won the fight. Right? The judges saw it differently. The judges scored that fight a draw. Okay. Their card matters, not my card. But I had Golovkin winning the fight. When you have a guy who is on a historical run like Golovkin and he's clearly ahead in the fight, right? Clearly ahead at the end of eight rounds, in my opinion, right? When the other guy makes a comeback but doesn't really hurt Golovkin, doesn't stagger Golovkin, uh, Golovkin holds his own. I, I don't know how the opponent gets a draw under those circumstances. Well, then we get to the second fight. And here's where something changed big time. Canelo's the aggressor. Worse yet, Canelo, who is a quick learner. In other words, after a rough series of rounds in the middle of the first fight, Canelo's making adjustments, right? Hence the comeback in the first fight. By the time we get to the second fight, Canelo has made a decision. I'm going to own the pocket. I'm going to force this guy onto his back foot. I'm not going to be afraid of getting knocked out. I'm one of the hardest punchers in boxing. That's the secret in this fight. As hard as Golovkin hits, understand Canelo has always been one of the hardest punchers in boxing. The danger is two-way. So Canelo is there lunging in with huge shots. He has Golovkin backing up. 
He has Golovkin at times conceding the pocket. In my opinion, he still loses. Right? Because Golovkin takes a step to the side. Look at the tape and is hitting Canelo repeatedly with a jab. Now let me just say, here's where skin really does matter. Cutting really does matter. If you had the same fight, and if Golovkin opened up a cut on Canelo, like Otto Wallen opened up on Tyson Fury, and if that cut was bleeding all over the place, Right? The exact same fight. Understand, the judges would have focused on that jab because it's popping the entire fight. The judges would have focused on Golovkin's jab. And Golovkin would have been awarded the decision. Now, I'll agree. As that fight goes along, Canelo starts landing wicked body shots. They actually start to take an effect on Golovkin. But again, Golovkin is stepping to the side and he's hitting Canelo repeatedly with a jab. I thought Golovkin won the second fight. Right? I'll agree. Canelo looks better in the second fight, but I can tell you, I saw the fight at a place that had a lot of Canelo fans in it. Right? In boxing, you can tell, simply because when the fighters enter the ring, one guy enters the ring, the crowd looks, you know, a little apathetic. The other guy enters the ring, people are cheering and stuff like that. Early in the fight, before the pattern breaks out, when one fighter lands some shots, people are cheering. When the other fighter is landing shots, people aren't cheering. Right? I saw the fight with a Canelo crowd. I'm just telling you, when they announced Canelo the winner of the fight, there wasn't a lot of celebration in the place. People thought Golovkin had been robbed. Well, let me just say, what happened in the second fight, though, is even more profound than that. Canelo stumbles. I shouldn't say stumble. Canelo finds. He deduces the formula on how to beat Golovkin. Right? Get him on his back foot. My point to you is, a guy with Canelo's head movement, a guy with the head movement that Canelo had in the Danny Jacobs fight, and that was spectacular head movement, can make the adjustment. In other words, if Canelo's collapsing the pocket, Golovkin is sliding out, coming back with jabs, a guy like Canelo who makes adjustments should be able to, as Golovkin tries to come back with the jab, swivel his head, right? Canelo's a little bit shorter than Golovkin, right? Hide his head, duck a little low, force Golovkin to reach for him. Well, since that fight, Golovkin's had two fights, right? He's also changed his trainer. He hasn't looked the same. Let's remember, too, there's an age dynamic here. Golovkin is now 37 years old. Understand, this fight is happening down the road. It's not even Canelo's next fight. Right? Golovkin's 37 years old. Now, he fights Steve Rolls. Steve Rolls wasn't considered a top 10 contender. But yet there was Steve Rolls. Revisit that fight. Steve Rolls is holding his own in the first three rounds. Let's just say Golovkin didn't look like he looked against Vanis Martirosian. Right? Golovkin is a guy who blew out some opponents. Right? But yet, against Steve Rolls, he was being outboxed. Golovkin gets the KO. But let's just say, up until the KO, you were watching the fight and you thought, this is not vintage Triple G. So then we get to a fight that I consider a car crash for him. 
a fight that I personally thought he lost by a few rounds. The Sergei Derevyanchenko fight. Right now, boxing is an expectation game. We understand that Triple G is huge box office. Right? We understood at the time that if Triple G beat Derevyanchenko, he was still in the hunt for another blockbuster box office smash hit fight against Canelo. But understand, if we didn't know the two guys, if these two guys were two strangers and you were watching the fight like you watch an undercard fight where you don't know the guys, young guys up and coming, and you say, okay, let me, let me watch this fight and find out more about the fighters. It would be clear that Derevi and Chanko studied, studied the Canelo film, understood that he could come inside on Glovekin. Understand, this was not conventional wisdom before the Canelo rematch. Understood he could bully Golovkin, come inside on Golovkin, get Golovkin up on the ropes, and work Golovkin's body. Right, folks, Golovkin is beaten to the punch in that fight repeatedly. Let me just say, too, <clears throat> that they spoke with his trainer, Jonathan Banks. And Jonathan Banks, in an interview, conceded that, you know, it was a real tough fight. It was a real close fight. That the other guy was younger than Golovkin. Well, the Revianchenko, I believe, is older than Canelo. What they're telling you is that the Golovkin corner knows that they're dealing with an older fighter who needs to try to hit home runs. Who has to pace himself has to take rounds off, has to try to hide in some rounds. Golovkin is at that stage of his career. Now what I want people to realize is Canelo is one of these guys who continues to improve even now. Right? In basketball you notice that over time Jason Kidd, who supposedly couldn't have a jumper, right? He was called Aeson because he didn't have a J. You notice that Jason Kidd actually came up with a set three-point shot, right? You noticed that after he was the world's best basketball player, Michael Jordan, at the top, comes up with that turnaround jumper, right? You, you notice Magic Johnson while he was at the top himself comes up with a way to hit threes right Canelo at the top of his game keeps developing right let's just say the guy is sharper now than he's ever looked to me so since the Golovkin fight he goes to 168 pounds. Understand, that's an 8-pound weight jump from 160. He's on his front foot against Rocky Fielding. Ends that fight early. Works over Fielding's body. Right? You understand that Canelo, especially after the Liam Smith fight, for example, is one of the premier body punchers in the sport. I thought his coup de grace... It's a Danny Jacobs fight. Danny Jacobs comes inside on him. Canelo has his head on a swivel. Right? The Canelo head movement in that fight was off the page. Right? Canelo showing you that a guy with a big punch, a guy who can drop Rocky Fielding, right? Visit the division. Doesn't know his way around 168. Somebody had to hand him a map, I'm sure. Then he just takes out a 168-pound champ. I know Rocky Fielding wasn't viewed as one of the real champs at 168. Okay, fine. But a middleweight came to the division 
and decided to hunt down the 168-pound champion is on his front foot and takes him out. I'm impressed. So then he's against Danny Jacobs. Now, it's interesting. Let me just say this. Front foot, back foot. Jacobs, to me, makes a mistake. Right? Maybe he thought he was fighting the Canelo of the Triple G rematch. You know, it's my belief that great fighters have to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. Instead, he finds himself fighting a different Canelo. One who allows himself to be hunted. Think about it. And as Jacobs comes forward to try to hit Canelo, Jacobs couldn't find him. Canelo hides his head. Canelo hides his body. You can win fights by offense. You can win fights by defense. It's even worse than that. Jacob switches to Southpaw. And Canelo dominates. <laughs> In other words, when Danny switches to Southpaw, you thought, oh, is this the Triple G Danny Jacobs fight? where he switches to Southpaw and Triple G's thrown off his game. No, here he switches to Southpaw. Guess what? Canelo can hang with Southpaw. So I believe Canelo made a mistake because Danny's not moving remotely as close as Billy Joe Saunders is going to move against him. Right? Understand, this is a different kind of lefty. Right? But let's just say Canelo outboxes Danny Jacobs. Puts on a boxing clinic. Well, then Canelo, apparently unimpressed by being able to go to 168 and knocking off Rocky Fielding in his first fight at 168, decides he's going to go to 175 and fight Kovalev. And so in that fight, Canelo, of course, new to the division, decides he's going to be on his front foot against Kovalev. Right? Gets the stoppage. I thought that fight was closer than people want to admit. But he understood that Kovalev, on his back foot, isn't a master. So Canelo's able to walk him down. Now there again, I think Canelo's making a mistake with regard to Billy Joe Saunders. Maybe he saw Kovalev on his back foot and he's thinking, Hey, I've handled a lefty, I've handled Kovalev on his back foot. Right? A lefty and Jacobs. Le J Jacob's going lefty. Now here's Kovalev on his back foot. I've shown I can patiently hunt down a guy on his back foot. Right? Kovalev isn't a born mover. Kovalev's back foot's like Anthony Joshua's back foot. That's a one-fight event. Right? Billy Joe's going to be more difficult. Well, let's just say the Canelo I'm seeing now is sharp. He's sharp. Since his second fight with Golovkin, he's only fought guys who either had the belt at that time or who had belts in the past. Not only that, you know, going into the first Golovkin-Canelo fight, the idea was, gee, can Canelo take Golovkin's punch? Well, Canelo, since then, has been in the ring with the 175-pound champion, who is a KO puncher, who KO'd Anthony Yard right before fighting Canelo. Yard was unbeaten at the time, himself a puncher. So I think Canelo is several years younger than Golovkin. He's sharp. Whereas Golovkin's looking ordinary against Steve Rolls before the KO. Whereas Golovkin is looking like the loser, quite frankly, against the Revianchenko. Right, while Golovkin seems to miss Abel Sanchez, in my opinion. Right, Canelo has looked sharp. Canelo still has his corner. Right, understand, Canelo has the corner he believes in. His corner comes to him. This is one of the real corners in boxing. And you get the feeling they decide on a strategy before fights. 
Right? So someone's saying, hey, man, be on your front foot in this rematch against Golovkin. Somebody's saying, hey, when Danny Jacobs tries to collapse the pocket, let him enjoy himself for a little bit while he's trying to find your head. Move your head. And these guys have it all set up. So you got the fighter with the tight corner. The fighter's running roughshod through divisions. Jacobs, middleweight, fielding, super middleweight. Golovkin, light heavyweight. <laughs> right? This is this is a guy running roughshod through divisions. By the way, let's forget the fact for a moment that Canelo actually won big fights at 154. And he's more in his prime than Golovkin. Right? In my opinion, Golovkin better hope that that Billy Joe Saunders fight is so controversial that Canelo has to pivot and spend more time there. Because if this fight happens, certainly if this was the next fight Canelo had, right, I think Canelo would beat up Triple G. The bet I like is Canelo to win the fight. I'm going to hedge it with Triple G by KO. Right? Punching power is the last to go. You know what they say. The legs are the first to go. Punching power is the last to go. Triple G can look average, land a big shot like he did against Steve Rolls, and the fight could be over. Right? Canelo is going to try to crash the pocket. He has to be encouraged looking at how Derevianchenko crashes the pocket against Golovkin. Using Canelo's blueprint. And Golovkin didn't have any answers. Right? I don't think Canelo is going to be bashful in the third fight against Golovkin. I think he wants it to be definitive. But understand, if Canelo's coming forward, that opens the door to Canelo getting stopped. So I expect Canelo to win the fight. I'll hedge to play with Golovkin by KO. I think this fight is going to be as different from the first two as the second one was from the first. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Tell us who you think won the first two fights between these two. Give us the scenario you see unfolding in the third fight. It's possible Golovkin could say, hey, the way to beat Canelo is with the jab. Maybe he's looking at the rematch, Phil. Maybe he's going to come out on his toes. Maybe he and Jonathan Banks have something new planned. Right? I just think... That's not going to happen. Guys at 37 don't decide to suddenly become Muhammad Ali. Right? I think being up on your toes, relying on a jab, requires too much effort. As Kovalev found out in trying exactly that strategy against Canelo. Right? While I think... Canelo runs into choppy waters against Saunders. I think Saunders has a good shot of pulling the upset. I do think Canelo beats Triple G in the third fight. I'll hedge that play with Triple G by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'm not going to play games with the over-under simply because both of these guys hit so hard <laughs> right, that this fight could end at any time. So I don't I don't feel confident saying, I'm taking the under, I'm taking the over. No, no, no. You know, I know the first two fights went 12 rounds each. Right? But I'm not going to play games with over-unders for this third fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.